So I'm back with another episode and today I want to talk about something that can actually be quite damaging for your relationship if you aren't mindful of it and it is assumption making. Now as a relationship coach it always amazes me how people perceive things in a completely different way and it's because of this difference in perspective that assumptions can often be so damaging to a relationship if they are left unexplored or unchecked. And what I mean by that is if we don't actually have open conversations or curious conversations about the exact thing that you are making an assumption about. So I should probably say what an assumption is (laughs) instead of assuming you're going to (laughs) know. But an assumption is basically a story or a belief that you think is true, but it hasn't actually been proven to be true. So to explain this, you might make an assumption about a person that you've met for the first time. So you might come up with this complex idea about where they come from or their background based on one interaction that you've had with them. So based on what you've noticed about them in that one moment. And it really only takes your brain a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes to come up with an assumption. And you come up with an assumption based on your own unique way of viewing the world and your own value system, which differs from the people around you because everyone has grown up in a different environment and we've been exposed to different things, to different sources of information. So to explain this in the context of a romantic relationship, because that's the core of my work, (laughs) let's say, for example, your partner and you get into an argument and he suddenly starts responding or not responding to you. So he goes silent and there's no communication, maybe for a couple of minutes or a couple of hours or a couple of days, depending on what it was and depending on their patterns of relating. But what is your first thought? For some, In their earlier years, no communication or silence when there was difficult times could have been code for you will be abandoned, you've done something bad, or your relationship is going to break down based on what they went through in their earlier years, like I say. For me, a lack of communication in my earlier years or silence in general was code for you are not behaving in a way that I want you to, or I don't accept the way that you are. And so that was quite anxiety inducing for me. So I did pretty much anything to get communication again and to ensure that the relationship would be okay. And this, like I said before, was my people pleasing or adjusting myself to survive my environment. Now, as a child, it served me, but as an adult, This people pleasing and assumption making wasn't helping me at all because not everything can actually be your fault and people don't always go silent on you because of something you've done, but actually because of their own inner struggles, their own lack of communication skills. Sometimes they need to think things through before they communicate, but they don't know how to communicate that in words. Sometimes they have fears just like you or insecurities just like you that actually cause them to just completely avoid communication. But as a child, you just had that one way of viewing the world. But as an adult, you have that option to view it in a different way. Now, sometimes people actually do go silent on you because they do want to punish you. But again, you can't assume that unless you ask a question or unless they actually tell you that they're intentionally doing it. Now, if that's a reality for you, I would suggest going to speak to someone because that is a toxic way of relating to anyone in your life. But maybe I'll give another example. (laughs) Let's say your partner texts you and says, hey babe, I'm gonna be working late tonight, don't wait up. What's your automatic thought on that situation? Again, for some in their earlier years, 
working late, don't wait up, might have been code for I'm having an affair, I'm not going to be home. And so as an adult, you might assume that your partner is lying to you, that they're with someone else, that they're not being loyal, even if they haven't given you any prior reason to doubt them. Although for some, there are reasons to doubt, but that's for another podcast. I'll do one on trust in a relationship. But if you've no reason to doubt them, you might be liable to assume the worst because of your own unresolved childhood trauma or past relationship trauma and the assumptions that you created because of those experiences. Also, we are also forgetting that there is a lot of information that we don't have in so many situations. So you don't know all of the reasons as to why someone is behaving in the way that they are. And most of the time, you only know the facts about a situation or someone's actions that you can actually observe. And so you can't know a person's thoughts or feelings behind a certain situation or certain actions unless you ask them. And you cannot come up with another explanation other than the one that is presented to you without proof. And the only way that you can get proof is by having a conversation and asking some key questions to gain clarity on your assumptions. So do you see how that can ruin your relationship? Do you see how you assuming things can actually get you into trouble or into conflict sometimes? And also, Do you see why it's important for you to do the work on yourself for the sake of your overall inner peace and happiness and relationship success? When it comes to relationships, we need to understand that everyone brings their own experience, their own background, their own trauma, their own patterns of relating to a relationship which informs how they see things, how they do things, and pretty much everything about them, who they are. So you are only really hurting yourself and your own feelings if you start to assume that your way of seeing things or doing things is the only way. You are only hurting yourself if you start telling yourself stories and arriving at conclusions based on those stories alone. You're you're inviting conflict and disconnection into your relationship by making assumptions too. So I guess this kind of brings me to how to manage your assumptions because I don't want to go too deep in this episode. (laughs) But if you're listening to this episode, I'm going to give you a little bit of a prompt, take out a pen and paper because you might want to jot these next couple of tips to him. But if you think about assumptions, you kind of have to train your brain to think a different way. So step one of this is notice yourself daily, keep track of your assumptions. They can always be 100% true because you don't have all the facts or details. So notice when you overreact or start telling yourself quite a big story that maybe seems a little bit off to the situation at hand. Or even notice that in your partner when they overreact or when they start to arrive at conclusions without you actually saying things. So I'll take a pretty common example. Let's say you're out with your partner on a night out and suddenly you see that they start talking to a random person and you freak out in your head and you start thinking, oh my God, they're going to leave me just because you've seen them talking to a person. That's an example of you telling yourself stories in those moments because the reality of that moment is your partner is talking to someone on a night out and that's it. You don't have all the facts, so you need to ask a question to get clarity on your story in that situation. But step two of this is you need to understand your belief system. So the stories that you're telling yourself in those moments or about other people 
are not actually about them. They're a reflection of your own inner narrative or your origin story. And for the most part, that's going to be negative. So those thoughts that sound like they're going to leave me, that you're going to reject me, they don't love me, they're not being loyal to me, they're controlling me or whatever other narrative that you're telling yourself. That's a reflection of your belief system. So your stories are about you and your life experiences more than anything else. So you really need to figure out where they come from, how they are actually helping you, and how they are harming you even, and what evidence you actually have to prove those stories to be true. And if you can, What's another way of looking at that situation? Now, my step three or tip three, realize that your partner or the other person that you're telling yourself stories about is also probably telling themselves stories too, in the exact same moments that you are as well. So on that note, make a plan together to do like a little bit of a check-in. And the more you do this kind of a check-in, the more connection and intimacy will build and the less intrusive those thoughts are going to be. So plan when to do a check-in on a regular basis. Don't just dump it on them. (laughs) Make sure you're both feeling really good before talking about what's challenging for you or the stories that you've been telling yourself. And if the other person can't talk to you then, then ask them when they can talk to you and make a plan. Okay, when is the check-in going to be, if not now? And if you're talking to someone about the stories you're telling yourself, a phrase like the story I'm telling myself is, is going to be helpful. Don't start off with when you did this or you did X, Y, and Z and that made me feel. That's a little bit of a a blame factor there and a shame factor, which you don't want to do. You want to um, enable the other person to feel safe and to actually listen to you. So don't use your statements and think about what makes you feel comfortable opening up to someone else. My last and final, final tip for this episode is stop assuming. Just catch yourself and put an end to it because at the end of the day, you are the only person who can actually stop these thoughts and these stories. You are also the only person who can rewrite them. So stop assuming things about other people. Challenge your thoughts. Start asking more questions and communicate. Communicate, communicate, communicate. I cannot stress that enough. It is essential for any kind of a relationship, for any relationship to be successful. Even communication is key about absolutely everything. So that's all that I have got for you for today. I'm just scanning over my notes. (laughs) But as always, if you liked this episode, please do drop a like or a star or a rating or a review or a tag on Instagram, (laughs) all of the above. (laughs) And I will catch you on the next episode. And Thanks for tuning in as always.